I'm going to start uh, just by uh, introducing, introducing myself. So, um, Susana Cordova, I'm the head of international trade here at the Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce. And it's a pleasure for me to welcome you today to our Choose France to Grow Your Business in Europe, focused on Normandy in partnership with Business Front Agency, AD Normandy, uh, territories of, sorry, I cannot pronounce that correctly in French, uh, but it's great for us to be partnering with, um, uh, in, on this occasion with Business France, um, if, as France is one of our top exporting markets and trading markets. So it's great to have the opportunity to showcase some of the investment opportunities that uh, the region has to offer. So uh, today, uh, before we officially kick off, I just wanted to let you know, A, the session is being recorded. The slides will be shared after the event, alongside with the link uh, to the webinar, so uh, you can also watch on demand. So uh, without further ado, I just want to kind of work, uh, walk you through what today is gonna be all about. So we have a tight agenda with lots of interesting presentations offering you great insights. And I'm gonna tell you a bit about the chamber for those who might not be aware of who we are. Then I will hand it over to Business France and AD Normandy so they can introduce what they do. Uh, we'll have a panel discussion which will include a wide range of uh, organizations that will tell you about the benefits and opportunities uh, about investing in France. Then we'll have a Q&A session that will extend to the delegates uh, and then uh, for those who book a one-to-one -one meeting, they will break out into groups for that. So if you happen to have a question about what is being discussed, uh, we, we kindly ask you to hold on until we have the open uh, Q&A uh, later on. So just to continue, um, just about, the Interna uh, about Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce, we are the largest accredited Chamber of Commerce in the UK with over 4,200 members. We cover 10 local authority areas within the Northwest region. However, we do have members across the UK uh, worldwide. We also have about 800 um, or, um, companies as part of our GM business community, something that we launched back uh, in 2020 as part of our support through the COVID situation. Uh, our top three sectors are within the manufacturing and engineering, property and construction, and business and legal financial services. Having said that, one of our growing uh, sectors is within the digital uh, tech, creative and uh, technology areas. We host about over 200 events annually that gather over 15,000 delegates. We are an award winning chamber. Uh, we have a global business network that expands to more than 600 connections of 40 partners uh, that allow us to cover about 90 markets. Uh, this is just a few of the accolades that we have uh, received in the last few, few years. And in terms of the international trade support that we offer, we work with both UK and overseas companies that are keen to uh, increase their international footprint, whether that's through exporting, importer, or investing. So we offer a wide range of market awareness um, events like this one that you are here today. Uh, market entry services, which include finding partners overseas. We also offer training courses covering uh, different areas of the export and import practicalities, including customs. We offer best book advice and custom compliance services. So from audits, from um, BAT advice, export controls, and so forth. We also offer a wide range of uh, funding and getting paid services. So that's from letters of credit, to foreign exchange services and the recovery, just to mention but a few. We are also the largest uh, provider of certification services in the north of England, that's helping you with your certificates of origin, EOR1s, uh, ATA carnets, and so forth. We are also a customs uh, clearance agent, so we are able to help UK companies established here in the UK with their export and import customs entries. So I think that's uh, pretty much in a nutshell. And I just wanted to quickly say that between, uh, as of 2020, uh, Greater Manchester Charm, uh, Greater Manchester region uh, traded about 1.6 billion worth of goods and services with France. So it's one of our top 
five markets in terms of trade trading. There are over 1,200 companies actively uh, trading with the, with France. And despite the impact of COVID between 2019 and 2020, actually our exports grew to the region. So again, this is a great opportunity for me to kind of now welcome Business France uh, to continue the presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing my slides so you can continue with yours. So thank you so much and yeah, uh, all to you. Thank you, Susanna. I'm going to share, share my screen now. So good morning, everyone. We are very pleased to welcome you and to discuss logistics solutions today in France and Normandy. Um, there we go, perfect. And uh, we trust you will learn about business opportunities um, in France and Normandy and connect with our key speaker today. Uh, my name is Melisande Roche. I am leading the team of um, investment, inward investment um, in the UK and Ireland um, and uh, at Business France, which is the um, official organization for international development of the French economy. I will give you a little bit of introduction and connect, context, sorry. Uh, to this event today. Um, it's always good to know your neighbors. Uh, France and the UK have an obvious uh, common uh, history of which trade has played a key role. Um, the, the figure speaks for themselves, actually. Uh, globally, the UK is the third largest investor uh, in France after Germany and the US. And in return, as um, um, Susanna mentioned, uh, France is a great supporter of British uh, business as its fifth largest uh, trade partner. What about Greater Manchester? France is the fourth and fifth largest um, trade partner with uh, the region in terms of goods and services. The number of UK investment in France was 151 in 2021, uh, which uh, was a raise, a rise of 25%, um, and confirming France as the top, as the first um, destination, European destination for British um, businesses. And that represents one out of one in 10 jobs created or maintained uh, in, by foreign investors in France were actually thanks to UK uh, investment. That, that's quite uh, important to notice. Overall, it's uh, 2,000 UK business uh, in France, representing 164,000 uh, people. And some of them are actually from Greater Manchester. Uh, you may know them. Uh, it's just a few uh, examples. Uh, body coat uh, in the heat treatment and um, uh, thermal processing services. They have a large presence in France with 27 sites. Um, Mike Bride, the cleaning products leader, uh, producer, and also uh, distributor, um, uh, has been in France uh, for quite a number of years now with three manufacturing sites, uh, one of them in Normandy, actually. Um, but also in the food industry with GA Pet Food, um, Tetrazil in the car industry, and Radius Payment Solution has been in France for 10 years now. So I will now hand it over uh, to uh, my colleague Guillaume from AD Normandy, uh, so he can share with you the regional picture of the connection between uh, the UK and France. Guillaume, up to you. Yes, thank you very much, Melissa. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Guillaume Kirard, and I'm the Inward Investment Manager at Adi Normandy, uh, the Economic Development Agency of Normandy uh, Regional Council. Um, so last week, Luca Di Meo, the CEO of Renovo, wrote a post on LinkedIn <coughs> about the cross-channel link between its two factories, one located at Dieppe in France, and the other one located at Emson in the UK. And a fantastic Formula One car developed together the afternoon. So you may be not running a Formula One, but you still have the business to run. And that's why we have decided to do this webinar. Why is yet a symbol of post channel industrial excellence? Why is yet important to consider when you want to export to efficiently your product from UK to France? As uh, uh, Ms. Cordoba and uh, Medicine said, exporting is key. It's very important for your business and your operation in Europe. One in five greater Manchester businesses exports their products, and France is a key market. However, the supply chain 
from UK to France has been challenged by several factors these days. Post Brexit regulation, post COVID logistic congestion, the work at FA route reliability. But the yeah, industrial ecosystem has three advantages I want to share, three advantages which can improve your supply chain and logistics to France. First, uh, from a geographical point of view, if you draw a line from Manchester to Paris, the heart of French economy, yet yeah, is in this line. It is the most direct cross channel route to France. <clears throat> Second advantage, yet yeah, is a great showcase of Normandy industrial excellence and attractiveness. The app economy is very, is very diversified with major international companies already located there, such as Renault Alpine, Toshiba, Royal DSM, Nestle, EDF, DFDS, and so on. And yet has a strong advanced engineering network of companies like Manchester. Third advantages, thanks to Vialog Business Association, the industrial ecosystem is very well organized. It's very well organized and it's very important. It can offer this organization, Vialog, can offer high quality supply chain solution to industrial which want to uh, sell their products in Europe. Toshiba, uh, represented by Alain Verna, DFDS, represented by the Stephanie Seven, and Bruno Biel, uh, Euro Chanel Logistics, represented by Bruno Bellia. Uh, will give their testimonial about uh, the services and how they can uh, help you uh, for your supply chain uh, from UK uh, to France. Uh, you, be, uh, you must know that in Normandy, 163 UK companies are already located in Normandy, from small company to major one company, and we have a strong community of 7,300 British citizens, such as Graham Presse, the general of manager of the group of Normandy Development, which already which will, um, who will give also uh, give his testimonial about living and doing business uh, in Normandy. <coughs> yes. Next slide. Thank you, Guillaume. And before that, if I can just, there we go. <laughs> Before we hand it over to the panel, I'll um, just in echo of what was Guillaume saying, I will give you three reasons also to uh, consider France as your logistic uh, hub. Um, the, the first one being the location, it's a critical one, as uh, Guillaume uh, explained for Normandy. Uh, you have uh, through France an access to an easy access to 500 million uh, co consumer market, um, which is the second largest market in the world. And also, a um, bridge. It, uh, France is a bridge to uh, the Middle East and the, North, uh, the African uh, markets. And for that, you have key uh, logistic players. Uh, some of them are French. You may know them: Diodis, Bolloré Logistics, uh, CMA, CGM. GFCO, just to name a few and to let you know that uh, all actors and players are really ready to help you uh, move forward. And uh, now let's move, uh, move in, zoom in into Normandy's economy and um, geography with Guillaume again. Well, thank you, Melissa. By choosing GEP as a gateway, you will choose one of the shortest and the most efficient ways to access the Seine Valley. The Seine Valley, it's a critical zone in terms of industrial power. Seine Valley, it is the industrial heart of France with 34% of the French GDP generated there. So when you choose Kiev as a ferry route, you arrive directly at the heart of industrial market in France. This Seine Valley means for you, Manchester companies, both markets, but suppliers in pretty every much industrial sectors such as automotive, agro, digital, health, advanced engineering. Company, companies located in Normandy get an easy access to this market. Why? Because we have a strong logistic capacities, a strong logistic offers, both national and international. You may, as you see on this uh, map, uh, Normandy has five ferry routes to UK and also Ireland and has access to more than 750 ports, thanks to Le Havre Aeroport, the first international French and international port. 
Normandy, for you, Manchester company, history and import export proxy to European market. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Guillaume. And the second reason to consider France as your logistic hub is uh, France high quality multimodal infrastructure. Um, across the country, you will find multiple and rapid um, connection solutions, whether it is by rail, by um, roads, waterways, or also by air. France is home, as you know, uh, for uh, of the um, first European uh, freight airport at uh, Charles de Gaulle, and also uh, has the densest uh, Europe, European uh, motorway um, network. Um, France major ports, as you may know, um, are Le Havre, uh, in Normandy, Dunkirk in north of France, and Marseille in south of France. And for the last several months, they've uh, seen an increasing volume of goods coming in. So some of them, most of them, have in highly, uh, heavily, heavily, sorry, invested in uh, extending and also uh, developing their capacities. Just to give you an example, in Normandy specifically, Haropa, which is the organization that gathers um, three ports, Le Havre, just uh, southeast of uh, Dieppe, uh, Rouen, and also uh, Paris along the Seine River. Um, they have invested 250 million euros just to extend their warehouse um, capacities. Land and warehouse is indeed, availability is indeed important. And in France, it's uh, in average less expensive than in the UK. Our speakers have prepared for you a booklet with uh, site opportunities that we are going to share with you at the end of this uh, webinar. Um, infrastructures is also about local business network. Um, and I'll let Guillaume say more uh, about that uh, in Normandy specifically. Thank you. So yes, when you choose the gap, you choose a ferry link, you choose an ecosystem, but you choose you enter, in fact, in a community, uh, a community of people who know each other and who know how to uh, help you to develop your operation in France. So at Adia Normandy, uh, we have a dedicated team uh, which uh, provides a large panel of personalized services to assist foreign companies in their setup, development projects, such as seed selection, visit, financial public support, recruitment services and partnerships, and so on. But uh, first, uh, the roadmap uh, we want uh, to develop with you is the uh, first we will put you in touch with the uh, Diap network and especially especially uh, with uh, Vialog, uh, the business association Vialog, uh, to find supply chain solution and to assess them with uh, 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 with a true industrialist, a true uh, a logistic expert in uh, supply chain, uh, and you will assess uh, uh, your supply chain solution and uh, to assess Diap as an opportunity uh, for your supply chain operation to Europe. But on second, uh, we can put you in contact with industrial network to create partnership, to find supplier, to find clients. Uh, in fact, Normandy is very well organized. We have a very diverse supply economy. Uh, we have pretty much in every uh, industrial sector. And for each key sector, uh, 12 in all, we, you will have uh, is the contact with a key association, an association which represents these sectors. For example, uh, in Normandy, we have uh, the business association Next Move. Uh, it is a national automotive association. We have an association for the beauty product Cosmetic Valley. We've got an association for uh, uh, agro food uh, uh, industry. We've got also an association for uh, pharma and uh, medical and health products and so on. So uh, it's easy uh, for us to put, to put you with the right contact uh, to enter the market because it's very difficult to enter a market, but we know how to do that. And uh, it's uh, uh, really, I think it's an opportunity for you to grow your business. Uh, secondly, um, to, uh, for your operation in France, and uh, if you want to uh, uh, expand and, for example, open a subsidiary, a sister company, a logistic uh, uh, warehouse, or, or open a representative office, uh, we have the right contact for every step. Uh, we have set up a Normandy Tax Force, 
this Normandy tax force are composed of a major, in majority of uh, uh, British French nationals. So they understand clearly uh, the UK culture, the UK uh, uh, industry. Uh, they know uh, you uh, quite well. And, and, and so we, you will have uh, easily uh, one contact for each step of uh, your project. For example, uh, solution logistic uh, with uh, Monsieur, Mr. Benya, but also for accounting, for finance, for legal, and so on. So uh, it's what we call the welcome package, and we welcome you in Normandy yet. Thank you, Guillaume, and that's a specificity from Normandy, so I hope you will take advantage of that. As Guillaume was uh, mentioning, uh, a strong local business network uh, is important. That's actually one of the major factors uh, when a uh, company is choosing to invest within a country. The other factors, as you may know, um, is the skills and availability of skills, the infrastructures, um, the local but also national support uh, at um, different level, and and also access to uh, grants. At uh, Business Friends in AD in Normandy, we help everyday uh, British companies to uh, opt to choose the best um, solution to set up um, in, in uh, to find the right setup opportunity in France and Normandy. And our services are free of charge and confidential. Over the last years, France has put into place uh, pro-business um, reforms to be more competitive, to be more innovative. I won't go over too much details, but just so you have in mind four major um, reforms. Um, the first one is uh, concerning regarding the um, the uh, the reduction of corporate uh, taxation, which is major <clears throat> for a business when you launch in a new country, um, allowing also greater flexibility uh, in the labor laws, but also at the same time training new skills because that's important as well. And um, in the supply chain specifically, in the supply chain industry, uh, what we can see observe in France is that over all the value chain of the supply chain, you'll find different qualified profiles. So we ca you can find all the way along someone to um, help you in your business every day. Um, the third uh, reforms uh, is the simplification of administrative procedure, procedure processing um, um, in, in your day-to-day -day, uh, business activities. And last but not least, a national plan to promote carbon neutrality. And uh, that's also a specific theme for ports. So uh, it's important to mention it. Um, and also the will to stimulate future and emerging technologies uh, for in key industries. And this national plan, uh, it's a one, 100 billion million, uh, 100 billion uh, plan, um, which is called France 2030. So you will find all the great ingredients to uh, successfully do business in France. And before I hand it over to our uh, moderator, Isabel, and our panelists, um, I will uh, say a uh, conclusion that staying close to your customer and optimizing your freight um, transportation are more and more key nowadays. Um, having access to a large market and a dense, well-connected also um, transportation network, benefiting from excellent infrastructure and port facilities with multimodal connection, um, makes friends, um, the, all of that make friends a, start, a, a smart move for you, for your business. Um, so um, hopefully you will consider it. Um, and the airport is actually a great example of it. So uh, I will let the panel share with you all these advantages. And before that, I will introduce you to our moderator, um, Isabel Widmer. Um, she's joining us today from uh, Basel in Switzerland. Uh, Isabel is an MD with a research clinical and pharmaceutical industry background. Uh, born in Switzerland, uh, she had lived and worked in the USA, in the UK, in France, in Israel, and also obviously in Switzerland. Uh, she is bilingual in English uh, and in German, but she also speaks French. Uh, in 2013, she founded a company, Elitra, 
Uh, she works with clients, including top five pharmaceutical companies, uh, to implement sustainable transformation. She focuses specifically on improving processes and technology by engaging people and encouraging collaboration to improve business effectiveness. In her spare time, she can be found cycling, uh, she just did in France lately, riding, and whenever possible, also driving a tractor. Isabel, I hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Melisande. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And um, I think Guillaume and Melisande have outlined many aspects of the functioning ecosystem that's in place in Normandy to support businesses to enter the French market. And also shared a lot of examples of companies who've done that successfully. So I think that was, was a wonderful lead in. Um, Obviously navigating a complex industry requires design planning and execution, as well as the right resources in the right location. And thanks to both Brexit and the pandemic, the industry has been faced with significant challenges in these areas, including the supply chain crisis, which has hit many of you, and which has led to supply chain pressure, bottlenecks and shortages, as well as oversupply. And in addition, of course, congested ports, custom clearance delays, and issues with unloading and onward transportation of freight has burdened companies further. And I think that's why we're on this call today. So on average, a typical container now spends 20% longer in transit than before the pandemic. So even though we don't have a crystal ball, it's safe to say that for 2022 and the next couple of years, the above issues are likely to still pose a challenge to businesses. And in addition to overall rising costs, that will be a challenge for companies and potentially that could cost businesses in Britain and beyond millions. So whatever the reality is, planning for various scenarios is critical to staying competitive. And there are many different options <coughs> beyond planning on just-in-time delivery, sprinkling, on demand delivery, moving storage of products closer to home, developing out, out of country production facilities, and um, all those different options that we'll talk about later as well. So we don't want to talk about problems, we want to talk about solutions. And I am joined by an excellent challenge, uh, challenge by an excellent panel today, who will be sharing some ideas for solutions for your businesses with you. And I am going to introduce my panel. So you have Stephanie on the left. I love the background there. That just, there's no other reason. You just want to go and visit her on that ferry with that background. Graham, Bruno, and Alain. And so to introduce Stephanie, Stephanie Savion is a freight sales manager at DFDS. She's responsible for promoting the company's routes to the French market. Stephanie's expertise is vast with over 25 years of experience in the industry. And she has been with DFDS since 2012, so significant experience. She grew up in Normandy and has never been too far from a ferry. Before DFDS, she was at p and and that was before DFDS arrived in Dieppe. Next in line, we have an Englishman. So it's nice, you've got French to English. So we have Graham, Graham from Living New Haven. So Graham Preci is the founder of, and CEO of Group Development Normandy, and he's based at the Normandy Ecospace Centre in Dieppe. He's a resident of Normandy, but he did used to reside in Sussex, and he has a granny that comes from Sheffield, so he has good ties to the north of England. Graham's focus is helping clients make sense of ESHG, so environmental, social health, and governance opportunities and responsibilities, and helping them take actions to get there. His previous roles include 10 years as Sustainability Director of Legal and General Group PLC in London, making major investments in UK cities, including Greater Manchester. And ongoing roles include Chair, Non-Executive Director or Executive Director of the following companies, Virtual Doctors, TDS Ultra, Social Value Portal, Three Hands, and Goscombe Homes. Graham has a great track record in linking the UK to Normandy. He's the co-founder of Startup Cruise, brought Misty Clip to the UK market, delivered the first zero carbon cargo service being between Dieppe and New Haven for 150 years, brought the ever Cornet, first Cornish gig, first ever, sorry, Cornish gig to Normandy, and produced Seaside Town, a film bringing together New Haven and Dieppe, which is on Amazon Prime. 
I wonder if Graham ever sleeps. Graham, do you ever sleep? No. So we're excited to hear from him why Normandy is a great place to work, rest and play for people and businesses of Greater Manchester. We have Bruno on screen too. I think you can't see Bruno at the moment. We do have a photograph of him, but he will be speaking later and you'll see him when he's speaking. So Bruno Belial, there he is, thank you. Euro Channel Logistics, ECL. So Bruno Belial is a founder, founded Euro Channel Logistics in 2001, a private company based in Dieppe in New Haven, West Sussex. The company is specialized in road freight cargo between France and Great Britain. There are daily departures ranging from single pallet to a full trailer loads. With more than 16,000 square meters of warehouse in Dieppe, Euro Channel Logistics can also provide clean and secure storage of cargo. The company is AOE cert AEO sorry, certified. By anticipation of the new Brexit conditions, Bruno has created a custom clearance service both sides of the channel to support its industrial clients, exporters or importers and all is alike. Bruno is also president of the Club Logistique de Dieppe Le Tréport. And last but absolutely not least, we have Alan Werner from Dialogue. Alan Werner is also in the room there with Stephanie and Bruno. It's a shame we can't all be together, but Zoom is a solution to many problems, despite the fact that we're not in the same room. So Alan is CEO of Toshiba. TEC, Europe Imaging Systems SA, the industrial division of the Japanese group based in Normandy, which produces toner links for the European market, but also exports to China. Bruno transformed the historical activity of assembling photocopies in Dieppe into a system of high value added logistics services. Oh, sorry. Uh, Alan Werner was president of the logistics in Normandy sector from 2013 to 2020, and currently chairs the UIMM, in Rouen Dieppe and Normandy region. He is also co-founder of the Violog Competitiveness Cluster, bringing together the know-how of some 15 local companies in terms of its industrialization, subcontracting, assembly, and logistics distribution. And I think we have a, a wonderful panel that will cover so many different topics today. And one of the key, I think, burning issues for many companies is logistics. So we're going to have question one, which will go to Stephanie. So, Stephanie, what logistic solutions does Diet offer for British companies? Uh, good morning, all. First, uh, so my name is uh, Stephanie Savio, and I'm a freight sales manager at uh, DFDS. Uh, so, um, the question today is uh, why you uh, choosing uh, Diet and Normandy for, for your business? So, the, the city and the region of uh, Diet have a strategic place uh, in France. When you're in Dieppe, you're nearby the, the Seine Valley and the main consumer basins, Le Havre, Rouen, and Paris. And you're only 200 kilometers from Paris, which is the first uh, European consumer basin. Uh, the New Haven Dieppe route links the United Kingdom to the Normandy, the west and the center of France in a pleasant and comfortable four hour crossing. And about the story, this is the first cross channel route. Uh, the arrival of uh, car ferries in 1964 brought the line into the modern uh, era, allowing to transport on the same ship passengers, cars, and trucks. Uh, the FDS is uh, being operating uh, the new Evan Dieppe route in partnership with Transmarch Ferries since uh, 2013. So now a uh, few words about uh, the FDS. So the FDS is a Danish company and uh, provides uh, ferry and uh, logistic services in Europe and Turkey. So we move freight and passengers on 34 ferry routes and our 10,000 employees are located in our 71 ferries and in our offices across uh, 20 countries. Our extended uh, network is present in the uh, North Seas. Uh, Baltic Sea, Mediterranean, and Cross Channel, where we also operate uh, the Calais Dover and the Dunkirk uh, Dover routes. Uh, Dieppe is uh, the French head office of uh, the FDS. So now back to New Haven Dieppe, which is uh, the route we are putting forward today. So New Haven Dieppe, this is uh, two departures a day from each port in low season and three in high season. The sailing time is uh, four, four hours, and uh, we, we provide each uh, driver with a bed in a shared cabin equipped with shower and toilets. 
our two sister ships, the Côte d'Albatre and the Seven Sisters, sail uh, all the year round between New Haven and Dieppe and carry on uh, each departure freight and passengers with a maximum capacity of 600 passengers per, uh, per vessel. Uh, so uh, we can ship your accompanied and unaccompanied traffic, your referred trucks and trailer, your industrial and hazardous cargo. So to summarize, uh, we, can, we are working with uh, diversified businesses and uh, can carry any type of cargo. So I would say that uh, compared to the Eastern Channel routes, uh, choosing New Haven Dieppe is uh, avoiding your driver's congestions at ports and waiting times. And uh, one of our big uh, assets here in Dieppe is uh, that we are the only operator and we provide our clients uh, tailor-made service, which is uh, much appreciated, especially since uh, Brexit. So be sure that uh, you and your drivers will be in uh, good hands with us. Uh, uh and the dfds stephanie so how many freight pieces are you carrying on average i would say that uh, we carry on average for 40 000 freight units per year for instance in uh, 2019 we carried uh, 376,000 passengers 126,000 tourist vehicles uh, and 38,000 freight units. And um, some figures at the end of the a April this, uh, this month, uh, we were 18% uh, up compared to the previous uh, year, especially for the whole freight traffic. So DFDS can uh, bring some uh, solutions to your business by uh, offering an attractive rate in exchange of a potential volume. So. Uh, to be discussed uh, individually uh, with you. By carrying your accompanied and unaccompanied traffic, we are also much uh, experienced in the carriage of uh, refer uh, trucks and traders. Uh, so we have a CIVEP in Dieppe, which is temporarily closed, but uh, the CIVEP is due to reopen soon. And uh, since Brexit, uh, we also have a uh, custom, uh, customs broker department and uh, can uh, manage uh, customs clearance for you. So that's it for me for the presentation of DFDS and the New Haven Diep route. Unless you have any question, I'm uh, ending over uh, to Grand Prix. He will share his uh, experience and his knowledge uh, with you. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Um, hi, good, uh, good morning, everybody in uh, in Greater Manchester. My, uh, as Isabel said, my my gran was from Sheffield, but clearly uh, I lost the accent. So apologies for that. Um, I know Greater Manchester quite well, um, having spent uh, time at Legal and General Group, who invested uh, was a major investor behind Salford Keys, uh, Media City, and uh, LNG Modular Homes in Sherburn. So uh, I know Manchester quite well. Um, I now spend my time and life uh, work, living, working uh, and playing in Normandy in France. Um, it's a great environment. What I wanted to do was uh, explain a little bit about that. <clears throat> On the right hand side of this slide, um, I, I, I oversee many companies from France that are based in the UK. Uh, and I do that because uh, I do that as a non-exec or an exec director of companies. The reason why that's important to you is that should you choose to invest in Normandy or do business with Normandy, we're only 100 kilometers from the coastline of the UK. We are very, very close. You can govern companies and interests from where you are to here in France very easily. Um, some of those are telematics companies, some of those are telemedicine organizations, but the point is, it's very easy. We are very close. The other thing I wanted to uh, just highlight to you, I wrote down a list on this piece of paper here of the number of collaborative discussions that have happened just in the past six weeks between Normandy based businesses and businesses in the UK. Uh, in fact, yesterday I had a call, a Zoom call, very easy these days between ProCare in Wigan um, and a 3D printing factory here in Normandy that wanted to talk about um, speeding up prototyping of new products. It's very easy to do that on Zoom. 
But over the past month, the number of conversations between UK and uh, French Normandy businesses has increased. And there's lots of how can conversations that go on. So, for example, how could we make 20% of our UK electric car uh, and 3D print it uh, and, and ship it across the channel to the UK? How could we run an electric car rally between Paris and London next year in 23, 2023? How can we put a new type of heart monitor, as you'll see from the screen here, onto the heart of seven, onto the hearts of seven billion people to stop heart attacks happening between a UK and French company that happened last week? How can we move pallets across the channel using zero carbon and generate hydrogen at the same time? Normandy is a special, specialist region for hydrogen production uh, here in France. And finally, how can we connect female founders in Sussex with female founders in Normandy uh, for the first time on Zoom, for the second time face to face? So my experience of doing business between Normandy and the UK is a very positive one. Normandy is full of people that, are, that say, what can we, how can we make this happen? Uh, and that's because we have space to innovate. Uh, people respect the past uh, and culture as they do there in Greater Manchester. And we're close enough for you to keep an eye on what we're up to and for us to be collaborative. Thank you very much, Graham. So that brings us to our next question, which will be for Bruno. So Bruno, can you tell us how Dieppe has developed an accessible and open environment using post-Brexit new rules? I anticipate this will be very eagerly anticipated for your answer to this question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Isabel. I will try. Good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Bruno Belliard, and uh, I manage a road transport company based both in Dieppe and in uh, New Haven near Brighton. We have three main activities, road transport between the UK and France, logistics, storage, and stock control for cargo. And the third one, custom clearance declaration and custom advice. Um, in fact, very early after the refer referendum of the Brexit, with the support of the club logistics, the Dieppe, and the Normandy Logistics Association, we have organized several meetings and invited the Dieppe economic actors in order to prepare them on the necessity to anticipate the new post-Brexit rules of trade. This means to change the format of their custom invoices and agree the best inco terms with their clients, to get an ERE number, on the HMRC website to prepare the best documentation supply chain of the export or import of goods to the continent. Then choose a transport operator, choose a UK broker, choose a French broker according to the chosen INCO terms, and lead to organize and book the ferry shipment with their transport operator. Uh, we, Eurochannel Logistics, we are working with two British networks, distribution networks. One is Pallet Track based in Wolver Wolverhampton, and the second one, United Pallet Network based in Lichfield. And the French, French one, whose name is Paul. And every day, five times a week, with our track and trailers, we are connecting the UK, the United Kingdom to France through the New Haven Dieppe ferry service. Palletized cargo are mutualized with all the freight coming from the UK postcode, all the UK postcode areas. The freight are custom cleared, shipped, and cross docked to the Harleon hub before to be delivered to the final French consignees. And the mutualization of, the, of all these freight through the networks enable us to propose very competitive rates. A few words uh, about our company. Um, created in 2001 in Dieppe, we have opened a UK <coughs> office in 2005. 
the UK office is established on the port of New Haven. And we are able to carry from one single, single pallet to a full load trailers. Our fleet is composed of 35 trailers and we have uh, French drivers and British drivers. And we have cho chosen the unaccompanied service through the New Haven Dieppe line in order to avoid waiting times at the borders. <clears throat> A map to show you our two locations of our, um, the situation of our two clearance offices. So we have created a CFA for Cargo Flow Agency, uh, our, uh, which is a, a UK broker, uh, and uh, ECL France, Euro Channel Logistics France, uh, is preparing the continental entries for the for the custom clearance. And we can also clear cargo for for which the clients do not choose us for the transports. A uh, few words regarding our logistics services. Uh, we can offer you pure storage and stock control with our w WMS warehousing managing system. Uh, we can also propose you underbound storage area to allow you to store in suspension of VAT tax and duties for a maximum of 90 days. Uh, all our warehouse are built in concrete video equipped and safe and secured. Uh, Euro Channel Logistics has been um, EAO agreed economic operator certified in 2000, 2011 for safety and security by the French custom authorities. Uh, so as a conclusion, uh, if you are successful in exporting to France or if you decide to settle a business in Dieppe, we can offer you all assistance regarding transport and custom clearance. Our, our UK and French uh, teams stay at your entire disposal if you have any question or investigation in these fields. Thank you very much. Um, Alain, would you like to add a little bit on the question of how Dieppe has developed an accessible and open environment using post-Brexit new rules. Yes, uh, hello everyone. So nice to be with you this morning in order to speak about uh, Dieppe territory and uh, our activities here. So maybe first of all, uh, let me tell you a few words about uh, uh, the reasons why uh, such uh, worldwide uh, Japanese group uh, like uh, Toshiba uh, came to France and uh, more especially in Dieppe in uh, Normandy. So uh, this was in the year uh, 80s when the uh, European community was uh, applying uh, uh, anti-dumping duties on the products imported from uh, Asia and more especially from Japan also. And at this time, uh, one way to escape to the anti-dumping duties uh, used to be to uh, be able to develop more than 40% value-added activities here in, in France or Europe. And this is basically the, the major reason why uh, many, many uh, Japanese uh, companies came to Europe, including uh, also, of course, uh, England, but also France, and more especially here in, in Normandy, uh, in order to escape to such uh, anti dumping duties policy. So uh, Toshiba uh, was uh, highly considering Normandy because uh, it is one of the major uh, entrants port with Fleur Harbor uh, to French market. Uh, we are very close from uh, Le Havre here in Dieppe. It's uh, about uh, 60 uh, miles. And uh, uh, it was, of course, very convenient to be able to import the products and uh, later on the kits of parts which were necessary to assemble our copier machine, so which was uh, our uh, historical uh, activity when we started here in Dieppe. So uh, after uh, this uh, decision was made to invest uh, uh, more and more here on our site uh, with not only copier assembly, but also toner production. We are now producing toner for the whole European market here from, from Dieppe. Uh, it's about 900 tons a year, which are uh, delivered to all Europe uh, in uh, toner cartridges, but also we are exporting toner bulk powder to our Chinese factory 
uh, for Asian markets. So it is also interesting to notice that we can export to China from uh, Dieppe here. And uh, during the, the years uh, uh, 90s to, to the year uh, uh, 2008, we used to continue with copier assembly, toner production, but also logistics distribution of all of our products, uh, multifunctional product for office printing, but also toner cartridges uh, in France from our logistics center uh, on the same site. And then we have uh, diversified our activities with several uh, uh, products uh, of uh, Toshiba Group, uh, mainly uh, retail solutions, so point of sale solutions for retails, but also uh, barcode printers and uh, auto ID printers. So finally, we transform our uh, original uh, assembly activity uh, to services. So, and uh, we have uh, uh, diversified our activity with uh, uh, different kinds of services, including uh, configuration to order of uh, copier units with the uh, uh, body of the copier machine, but also additional cassettes in different formats. Uh, automatic document, document feeder, uh, sorters, staplers, and so on, and more and more also, including some uh, individual configuration with uh, uh, individual parameters, such as the IP address of our final customers or even mail address of customers. So it means we are able here to have a, a very high flexibility with the capability to uh, uh, finalize the product as the final customer is wishing to, to receive his, his uh, goods. Uh, from our site directly. We have developed a repair center, a call center also, technical call center. And uh, now we are also more and more considering uh, refurbishing activities for, uh, for complete products, complete MFP, but also uh, refurbishing and refilling of toner cartridge as well. So it means uh, we have a very high flexibility here. And uh, thanks to uh, the skills we can recruit uh, uh, on the territory, on the Jet territory, either for operators in different skills, but uh, also for engineers. We are very close to uh, Rouen Metropole, which is no more, no more than 40 miles from, uh, from Dieppe, and uh, with uh, several high school in uh, engineering, in uh, marketing, uh, in uh, electronics, and uh, all the skills and, uh, and capabilities are available here in order to uh, diversify and to develop our activities. So maybe uh, let me speak a little bit then about uh, Vialogs, so which uh, uh, Guillaume mentioned before. So uh, Vialog, we have uh, found it together with Bruno, in fact, uh, who, speak, uh, who spoke just before me, uh, in uh, 2009. And the idea was, in fact, to combine the industrial uh, capabilities or skills of, uh, of uh, Toshiba with uh, logistics. Uh, capabilities of uh, Eurochannel logistics. And uh, we uh, had the ambition to gather more skills than our uh, uh, both companies uh, by uh, gathering several uh, entities here in the Dieppe territory. So as of today, Vialog is uh, gathering 15 companies in uh, different uh, activities, starting from the uh, uh, design office, uh, engineering, industrialization, uh, Manufacturing in different uh, 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 different kind of features such as uh, uh, stamping, uh, machining, uh, plastic molding, uh, wiring, wire harnesses, or uh, electronics, uh, and also of course logisticians, as we mentioned before, uh, including Eurochannel logistics, which is uh, uh, specified in uh, in. Uh, cross-channel uh, traffic, but also uh, some logistic group uh, uh, such as Geodis, who also joined the Vialog organization. And Geodis is uh, able to uh, deliver your, your product or your goods uh, all over Europe or major uh, countries in Europe. So the specificity of Vialog is to gather these different skills or capabilities of, uh, of uh, different companies. Uh, and uh, we can, in fact, uh, help you for industrialization, for subcontracting, for logistics and supply chain solutions, industrialization of, of your product, and also customize, uh, customization of, uh, of uh, products or, or services. Uh, just let me you, uh, mention you uh, one example you have on the, on the right side of, uh, of the picture here, which is the, the Bbot uh, terminal. So this Bbot terminal uh, is, uh, in fact, collecting uh, empty plastic bottles. As you know, this is now uh, 
uh, high need to collect the plastic bottles in order to recycle the plastic. And this uh, terminal is, uh, in fact, dedicated to be implemented in a, in a major retailer's uh, gallery so that the customers can bring back their uh, empty bottles and it is crushed uh, on site by this uh, terminal. And this machine was designed by a startup, in fact, a company. And this startup came to us, came to Vialog five, six years ago uh, in order to find a, a partner in order to uh, manufacture his uh, product. Uh, we started cooperation more than five years ago, uh, helping for the industrialization of the product from trial run. And uh, now we have uh, assembly uh, several hundreds of machines which, are, which have been deployed all over the French market as of today. And now Greenbeak, the, the, the startup, is considering uh, internationalization of uh, his uh, market. So uh, this is one uh, very single example how uh, Vialog has the capacity uh, in order to help you to uh, uh, industrialize the product, to uh, manufacture it, and to uh, distribute it all over your market. So don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we can help you for sure. And uh, last but not least, uh, Vialog is not acting alone in the Dieppe territory, but we have very close relationship with uh, several clusters which have been mentioned before. So the club logistic de Dieppe, which is actually headed by uh, Bruno Bellia. Uh, so you can see that we have a very, very close uh, connections. Uh, but uh, we are also in touch with several clusters in Normandy, including the logistic uh, cluster, so logistics Seine Normandy, but also uh, the uh, car industries cluster, the space industries cluster, and the energy cluster of the Agro One. So any connection can be possible in order to help. Thank you very much, Alain. So Alain just uh, expand a little bit on how you can set up your business successfully and how he can help and how the others can help too. And I'd like to bring it to a close now with Graham. So Graham, can you share with us what the synergies or what are the similarities between Greater Manchester and Normandy and how yeah. that business? Thanks, Isabel. Yeah, of course. Um, we've got a lot in common between Normandy and Greater Manchester. There's there's no coincidence that the the first six letters of Manchester are La Manche, which is uh, French for the English Channel. So we have a lot in common. Um, the sun is shining today in Normandy, and the sun is shining, from what I understand, uh, there in Greater Manchester. Um, but when it isn't, you have a lot of solar power in the UK. But when it isn't. Uh, there is uh, there are two nuclear power stations here in Normandy that provide energy to grid around 24% every day from Normandy into the UK grid. Uh, so your businesses are already powered by Normandy energy. Uh, we also have many fiber optic cables from Europe to uh, the UK that run through Normandy. So we're already connected and have been irrespective of Brexit, irrespective of COVID, we're powering your businesses every single day. We are the closest piece of mainland Europe to Manchester, as the crow flies, uh, and uh, we understand here what it's like to be uh, strong northern cities. We are in northern France. Uh, you are in the north of the UK. We know uh, how resourceful and independent we have to be as places to connect with other parts of the world. Uh, here in Normandy, we have lots of space, time and good people to innovate and collaborate. And as the AD Normandy team, mentioned uh, we have financial support to help you to pilot and scale things here so whether you are a small entrepreneurial organization like those in normandy eco space in our 3d printing factory or whether you are a nestle or and anything in between uh, let's work rest and play together and do business thank you very much graham so when I introduced our panel, I said um, we have some highlight. We highlighted some com some company challenges that are faced: logistics, transport, slow custom processing, product storage and dissemination. Just to mention just a few. And all those challenges impact business efficiency, and they increase operating costs tr tremendously. And I promised you that uh, we would provide some concrete solutions to some of your challenges. And what you'd need to be able to solve those challenges is the access to expert knowledge and resources. And I think our panelists have addressed every one of those challenges and provided potential solutions on all fronts. And um, 
They've shown you how they can assist you to address those challenges in concrete areas, but also beyond. I mean, there's an amazing amount of knowledge in this panel and a lot of connections across the environment. So please reach out to any of those the panelists directly if you have a concrete question where they can assist you or to discuss a business proposition. And I will now hand back to Melisande and Guillaume who will close our session. It's been a pleasure being here with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, it's actually time for Q&A. So um, Susanna, if you want to open the, the discussion, if there are any questions yeah. from the audience. Thank you very much and thank you to all the expert panelists for uh, their insights into what uh, Normandy has to offer and the great connections between uh, our two regions. I think it kind of showcased very well how we could promote more trade between uh, Greater Manchester and Normandy. So now uh, I would like to welcome the audience. Uh, if you have any specific questions. I know there was one on the chat box, but I think Catherine is going to take that um, separately on waste, uh, talking about waste. So if there is anybody else that has any questions about um, what it means to operate in, in Normandy or how to connect with the different support available, the funding, uh, yes, uh, you're welcome to uh, raise your hands or put the, the question on the Q&A box and we'll pick it up. I don't think we have any, but uh, I'm going to give uh, people a, a, a moment. Uh, and in the meantime, I just wanted to ask a few questions to basically to business brands as well. So uh, this is our, our very first time that we, we are collaborating on an event, which I think is great. Uh, and my question will be, what other activities are you planning to do in terms of in between the UK and the north of England, especially in Greater Manchester, to continue, you know, the, this first step into bringing awareness about the opportunities that France and other regions in France have to offer? Thank you, Susanna. Um, I think that's a, a great opportunity for maybe Guillaume to um, officially announce an event uh, in uh, September uh, for which uh, Greater, Greater Manchester companies are very welcome to, to come. Guillaume, you want to say a few words? Yes, um, <clears throat> yes thank you, Melissa. Yes. So yes, in September, we have an immediate uh, a major event uh, the international uh, uh, surveillance uh, kite, kite, well, kite uh, international kite uh, meeting. Uh, it's an international event uh, which uh, which uh, attracts a lot of uh, international uh, people from all over the world, from uh, Asia, from USA, from uh, Canada, uh, from all over Europe. And I think it's a great opportunity for Manchester. A company uh, also for the Manchester, as a Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce, to come and to visit uh, the app. Uh, it's uh, always better to see by your own eyes the potential uh, of what you are proposed. And uh, we are really uh, invite you uh, at this event in September and uh, with uh, the app community, with uh, the app uh, territory. Uh, not only Diep, but the installment of Diep, such as Fales du Talou, uh, uh, all the, uh, the, the business community, and with Dialog, uh, we will uh, maybe uh, share and discuss and organize a, a visit uh, for your uh, company. Uh, you will help uh, uh, to, to, to come here in France uh, using Ferrylinks, using the FDS solution. And then uh, on this uh, occasion, maybe we can also organize a visit of the ship during the, the crossing, one well, of those crossing. So a great opportunity mm -hmm. and the weather will be nice. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> that sounds very good. Uh, I don't think I see anything in the chat box. But just to finalize, I, I guess for me is to ask, uh, the last question is how do, obviously, we have to contend with the, the fact that things have changed in terms of the way we trade with the EU and, and, and France continues to be a, a top market for uh, the Northwest region, for the whole UK, really. Um, but the Northwest region and Greater Manchester is, is a vital partner for us. 
how can we, uh, this was a first step and to bring, uh, uh, you know, our uh, businesses together, just learning more about the, the France and, and Normandy. What else can we do together in terms of um, in, in partnerships to help those businesses to understand more about more of the specific opportunities? Because this was great, but obviously there are obviously this is an ever evolving, you know, sectors and uh, innovations that are happening in both regions. What else can we do together that could bring uh, more opportunities and more businesses together to do more trade and investment? And we would love to uh, continue the discussion. Uh, maybe something we can organize and plan for the next coming months is um, some workshop on specific themes and spe specific challenges that companies meet when they export and they set up in France and Normandy. So we have uh, the usual suspects uh, uh, discussions that uh, we can uh, consider, such as labor laws and taxation. That's something that also is important to consider when you set up in a new country, uh, but also it could be specific to an industry. Um, so today was supply chain. Uh, we can go a little bit uh, further. We could focus on pharmaceutical, we could focus on agro, um, uh, cultural um, industry, and so on and so forth. Uh, so very flexible on that it really depends on the needs, on the demand of companies. Um, and uh, my team is also able to uh, come uh, in person in Manchester. We used to come um, every twice a year, uh, but now after COVID, everyone gets used to the uh, Zoom format. So uh, it's more a first meeting uh, online. And then if the opportunity uh, is happening, we can meet in person, but we are very happy to come uh, very close. So that's a great opportunity to, to, to size. That's fantastic. Yeah, just uh, just, uh, if, if just a, a comment on that. Um, what I've really found about Normandy is it's it's up for being challenged and what's possible. And we are the closest piece to mainland Europe. So we're the closest piece to businesses in Greater Manchester for 500 million consumers. So what, what we like, it, the trick of getting started is to get going and to get something to discuss and to, to solve a problem. So we're, we're up for being challenged. So please, uh, so, Give us some what ifs here in Normandy. What if we could do this? How can we? And we will respond. My next question is: Greater Manchester has um, most of our exports are actually in the service sector, and there is a lot of legacy within manufacturing and engineering. And most of what we heard today is mostly focused on the movement of goods back and forth. But what are the incentives as well for those that are, you know, looking? We have a lot of companies that continue to. You know, serve some of those companies in the EU and France and Germany. Uh, but obviously, they are trying to get used to the new business processes because even taking equipment to deliver a service in, in the other side is, is, is just become more expensive for them. So, uh, in terms of the services side, what kind of things uh, you think you can uh, help people with? Uh, I mean, I, I know there is the standard uh, about helping them just to kind of if they want to open a presence in an office down over there. But what else uh, in terms of, is the funding that you, um, the incentives that you mentioned will applic apply to also to service companies as well as the, the ones that are importing or exporting goods? Um. I see three questions, so I'll try to sum up. But um, um, Guillaume, feel free to jump in also for the uh, Normandy side uh, view of things. Um, we from so our services are really to help you find where in France it would make sense. But before that, obviously, you need to make business. You need to be introduced. You need to meet people. So we'll make sure that you get to know uh, the right players in your uh, field, and uh, um, whether it's regional or national, whether it's it's also the authorities, but also uh, um, private, sorry, uh, companies, um, big and smaller players. So you, you get to know and get a sense of how the, the ecosystem is. Once you're ready, once you are generating, you know, once you have attraction, um, you may consider to set up. And that's where also we can help in finding uh, which uh, is the best options in terms of uh, real estate, uh, localization, talents. Uh, we are able to help you find the right people for you to hire so you start smoothly but surely and successfully um, and uh, when it comes to incentives 
uh, France is really big on supporting innovation and um, also eco-friendly solution development. So uh, you will have a lot of incentives in innovation, in research uh, tax credit as well. Uh, France covers 30% of your overall expenses when you have a R&D facility in France. So very attractive. And again, the talents uh, are uh, also a key uh, when you, you consider uh, making innovation in France. And that's when you will get the most uh, incentive actually. Uh, and that's on a national scale. There is also um, a, a declination for the regionals uh, level, uh, which Guillaume can give you an insight of. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. Uh, regarding services, we don't have so much incentive. In fact, the most uh, important incentive is uh, the indirect one, the Adé Normandy one-stop shop organization. This one-stop shop organization will save a lot of money and time for companies which are which want to uh, uh, develop in France. Uh, because we are a one-stop shop organization, we can propose to company, uh, especially in services, which want to expand in French market, uh, uh, very uh, practical solutions such as co-working space, uh, uh, such as offices, but also we can put them directly in contact with potential uh, partners or customers. And I think this is really important. Uh, it saves a lot of time and money. Uh, you know, Normandy is uh, like uh, Manchester, uh, Greater Manchester is the same uh, um, uh, same uh, uh, amount of people. It's around uh, three, three million of people. It's a small, in fact, a small community where everyone knows everyone and it's very easy uh, to get in touch with the right people when you are introduced by, uh, for example, organizations such as Vialog or Adi Normandy. And uh, for these uh, services, which uh, services company and services, it's a very, uh, very important uh, in France. It's a key market. Um, I think uh, Normandy is key because it's at the door of uh, uh, Paris market, at the door, but without the cost. Uh, the cost, uh, so we, are, we can propose very, very competitive <coughs> costs, but by, if you set up in Dieppe or Rouen, it's very easy to get in touch with clients uh, in Paris area, in Seine Valley area. Uh, I remember, uh, it says the number, Seine Valley area is 34% of French GDP, which means there's a lot of clients there for British uh, companies. And uh, uh, we uh, can uh, organize a visit, uh, meetings, and with you, uh, Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce, uh, in order to trade, because uh, Normandy is all about trade. We are proxy. So it's a win win uh, partnership. And uh, uh, I really uh, want to do that with uh, the team. Thank you so much. That's music to my ears when you say that. Uh, I have a question from Karine. Um, I'm not sure, Karine, if you might be able to expand a bit further on your question. She's asking, I would love to hear a, a startup or a small businesses company selling services about the first impression exporting to France. I'm not sure uh, if maybe you can provide a bit more what is it that you want to know? It's, uh, it's about how to sell your services in France uh, for a small uh, company, a startup, how to start your, your, your international journey uh, in that sense. I don't know if she's still there. Is it possible to speak? Yeah. Yes, my name is Corinne Zhang. Yes, my question was about having um, a startup or a small businesses experiences regarding their first export services export in France. So I know that the panel are well, I would say established and they have been re trading for quite decades, if I can say that like that. But for small businesses, I presume all the panel, not the panel, but uh, I believe so most of the Zoom um, attendees are probably small businesses as well. So we would like to know not we, me especially, I would like to know, um, I would like to have an experience or, um, um, yeah, experience from a small businesses the first time they went to France and tried to trade, what, what was the challenge? What, where was the challenge they encountered or if they encountered challenges or not? One of your, the person 
you know, on the panel talked about organizing uh, a workshop. So maybe during that workshop, it would be great to bring some of those startup of small businesses. I have a, I can maybe help with that. So, uh, hi, Kerry. Um, just uh, so um, one of the things we did uh, here in Normandy and yet before uh, Brexit, we, 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 with our friends at DFDS is we got uh, 200 individual SME entrepreneurs onto a ferry uh, and uh, we got them talking to each other and connecting to each other. And actually on that ferry too were SME investors too. So actually uh, people buy people and uh, next week, we have uh, entrepreneurs, uh, auto entrepreneurs, as they're called here in France, uh, uh, self-employed uh, business people in the UK, uh, connected via Zoom next week between Sussex and uh, Dieppe, uh, and they all happen to be female founders. And so we connect those people first, and then when they realise there's a connection to their individual product or service, uh, they get together very easily on, on the ferry link or on technology, and they, they, they basically team up together to grow. Uh, and that's how, in our experience, it happens. And we've got some great experts here uh, to uh, do all the financial stuff and to do all the accounting stuff. But actually what, what we can do is help you find someone who's like-minded, who wants to help take what you do and expand it into Europe. Thank you, Graham. It is that that answers your question, Karin. <laughs> I will also add that in terms of starting your uh, journey, um, international journey, exporting services, the camera is also a place to help you with the, the the beginning of that. Just help you to understand what you know the service that you've got, uh, what requirements you might have to meet uh, when selling services overseas. We know that. Uh, the, the rules of trading kind of change between uh, the UK and the EU and in terms of the TCA there has been uh, you know even though services are part of the of the the, the the trade agreement there are some areas that remain you know vague in some instances or there are new criteria that businesses in the UK have to meet when selling services overseas and that might include the, you know, having the right qualification to deliver a, a service over there, um, just to mention but a few, or just even the ability to be able to provide that service in, in that market. I believe some markets might be more flexible than others uh, within the EU, but I think it's important for you to understand first, uh, what are your USP in terms of the services here in the UK, what can be sold uh, overseas and we can help you to also understand which markets offer the the best you know uh, export potential for your uh, service so uh, is there anyone else i want to add in terms of uh, the, the panel or that's okay that's okay right um let me see um i don't think we have more questions or am I missing something? Um, yeah, I don't think we have more questions on the chat box. So I just wanted to say thank you to all our panelists again, uh, to Business France, AD Normandy for uh, trusting us with uh, your event. And I uh, will welcome all the delegates to make sure if you have any questions, even if you think about those questions after the event, make sure to email us to us and we'll make the connections with uh, business friends. We will send you a, a slice and you'll have the contact details anyways. So you'll have direct contact with the, the people that you hear from today. So thank you very much. And I also would like to, uh, we know that a few of uh, the delegates have booked one-to-one -one meetings with business friends. So for those who booked meetings, please do stay behind. And for those who did not book, but maybe now have a pressing question that you would like to do, on one to one basis and stay on. Uh, I think there might be a chance that we can squeeze you, uh, squeeze one more company uh, for the one to ones. So thank you so much. And it's been great having you all today. And I hope the event proved to be useful, uh, provide you with the insights, and it's the first step on your international journey. So thank you again. Uh, and that's it from me. Uh,
Francesca, you want to come in and explain for those that are staying for the one-to-ones, stay on and we'll turn um, us in the, in the breakout rooms. Thanks, Susanna. Yes, uh, if uh, Hamad can stay, he's the first on the list. And in case someone else wants to uh, jump in for a last minute one-to-one -one meeting, just please send me an email uh, or just send uh, a message on the chat. Uh, we'll be able to arrange uh, uh, a, a meeting with the Business France or, or if you'd like to have a meeting with one of the panelists, uh, let's see if it's possible. So uh, whoever is uh, uh, as a one-to-one -one meeting, uh, book, book it for, um, for business, with Business France, please, please stay online. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're gonna give a, a few minutes then, so we just stay with the people that are having your meetings. Uh, no.